Well, it's the next day. Here we are. We have two inch pipe, inch and a half pipe, sorry. Inch and a half pipe threaded into the top ring. Custom collar, which the guy lines are gonna be attached to is installed and slipped on the top. We have here some felt basically, or just a spacer really, to allow the wind turbine or wind uh, blade thing to clamp down on this. Wind generator, I guess it'd be called. Have conduit going through the pipe so it'll be protected and everything. Bent down and around, and we're hugging this edge. Now, roughly every five feet or so, we have conduit clips installed on the outside face. They just have a single self tapping sheet metal screw, which you just buzz into the metal. And then they just clip the conduit. Damn. This is what a self tapping sheet metal screw looks like. Just has a little drill bit on the tip. All right, so we did that all the way down. And if we look here where the 10 foot pieces join together, you'll see like a rain tight connector. And that's to prevent water or pretty much anything from getting into the conduit where it's joined together. So we have the conduit going all the way down. Now, we have a junction box right here. And what we're going to do is install essentially a kill switch or a brake switch so that in the event we need to maintain the tower, we can go here, flip the switch, and it will act as a brake and stop the blades from spinning to allow us to maintain the tower for whatever reason or in case of an emergency right now we set this right here it's roughly four feet off the surface so that'll be at a nice easy height to access it's a little hard to visualize where it's going to dwell so i have handy dandy pole here with a scratch mark at four feet right here. So four feet off the ground will be where that switch starts. Now, what we're doing is dad sent in fish tape, which is a electrician's fancy tool, which is basically just like a nylon cord that you attach the wires to, and then you pull it back through, and it allows you to fish the wires through. You're almost here, Dad. I can hear it. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, just hear the echo then? Yeah. Well, I can hear the fish tape echoing through the system. Must be stuck on something. But we're going to pull that fish tape through, fish all the wires we need to connect to the wind turbine, which is three of them. Then we're going to wire it up, close this box off, install the switch, and then... I mean, goodness, we're almost ready to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is go grab the guy cables and attach them to the collar on top. Bianca did the mass for the cable we need, so we need to cut them to that length. I also need to get the backhoe out here, dig somewheres the piles that we need to anchor this to. Also, when I'm done, come back here and clean up all this trash the wind's blowing around. Never end in battle. Are you going to show my screw up? Yep, hang on dad, I have to detail your screw up here. Alright, so there's a kink in the pipe due to these amateurs bending it. Yeah, mainly me. <laughs> Anyways, he's going to try to actually, and he's doing it, crush it down with the vice grips right on where the kink the popped out, just like you would with the hose and try to flare it back out. Luckily, this is just galvanized steel, pretty thin wall. So super strong people can do it. It's hanging up the fish tape, which is the issue. All right, well, the kink is mostly corrected, but you can see right here it still That's exists. It. And, and if we look from above, we'll see that it kind of chicanes up and then back down. So happened? this right here is catching the fish tape and not letting it get past this little edge, no matter what we do. So. We're thinking that if we basically just pop this out, we can cut right here, cut right here, 
and just insert this in between, deal with that issue, and then have pretty much a nice transition to this curved piece here. That's what we're thinking, but we might mess around with the tape just a little bit more. Okay, so we started pulling the tape back, and then we had a ton of it, so we actually are past the connector. We think we're getting stuck here on this connector somewhere. Man, this is kind of tricky. It's a good thing we're not just trying to push the wire through. This would be hell. Great news. I wiggled it past whatever the hang-up was so we can get another 10 feet before it gets stuck on something else. Man, you know, it is annoying, but fish tape's awesome because you do it pretty much once. So, that's what we're doing. Yeah, you're down here now, I hear it. <laughs> Stuck again? I think we're stuck right on this connector again. These connectors are not the best thing. Maybe you should fish it before we put it together. I'm not sure. Well, we weren't caught up on anything except the box itself. So, awesome. We now have the fish tape out. Uh, except we lost the connector. No, we didn't. No? On the other end. Oh, it's on the other end. Oh, okay, gotcha. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it through and we're gonna hook the wire on that end, and we're going to pull the wire through as kind of a measure. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is now we need to assemble the wind turbine wiring. Oh, yeah, connect all of them together at the top. Yeah, so what I want is I want to measure one wire and have it come, you know, and have like about six inches extra or eight inches you know mm -hmm. inside the box right because what we're going to do is we're going to connect this switch and these wires are going to go from the switch they're going to go down to our conduit under the ground to the powerhouse mm -hmm. and then they're going to go to our charge controller well first they're going to go to the rectifier and then from the rectifier they go to the charge control mm -hmm. all right yes Time to do the wiring. All right, so for the connection from the wind turbine to the actual wires that are going the conduit, we need to make sure that it's really nice and waterproof. So what we've picked up is a four wire kit for well industry, all right? So this is completely submersible style connectors. They have a double female on each side here. You put one side of the wire on each side, crimp it, and then, it has these heat shrink tubing pieces, which you then slide around the whole thing, heat it up, it shrinks tight, and it's completely waterproof. You can see this little diagram here on the back on what to do. So that's what we're going to do. It'll be in the very top of the system. How about I'll go pull and you can feed it and you can take a video of this. Okay, sure. You know, you're gonna have to unroll it as we go. Alrighty. Moment of truth. It's time to start pulling the wire. This is how we have it set up. Have the wire stripped, gone through, pulled back around, looped around so it won't well, come undone when it's being pulled. All right, we are pulling the wire through. How I have it set up is just going here to the spool, like so. Go ahead, Dad. Like that. Whoa! And I do it with two hands and it doesn't do that. You can catch every little detail. That's how the videos get interesting, Dad. Yes, it is. You're absolutely okay. right. Um, so we here have here the very top of one wire connection and we stripped back just a little bit, just enough to go to the middle of that dot. We're going to slide that connector over like so and then crimp down. Hang on to that. Most crimpers are meant to be used on uh, like W-shaped connectors, and so we had to get, um, not a special crimper, but use the crimper that's designed 
to put a V in a round. Well, it's crimped. That's about as good as we're gonna get for now. And it is raining. So, unfortunately, gonna have to go in again. That's how it goes. Well, it's the next day, Friday, October 8th. The rain seems to have finally dissipated. Still left with a few speckled clouds. Let's hope it can actually let me work today. So we have the three wires measured out and ready to go. We have them spliced back and wrapped around each other for the pull. Now we're ready to pull all three cables in and then splice the top of the wires with the waterproof connectors so the wind turbine can be connected to that. So I'm now walking down to the base of the tower where the pole fish line is to fish the wires through the conduit. Let's hope this is easy. We went with half inch conduit because we believe we can get all three wires in the fish tape through here and save some money. If you don't want to deal with it, I'd recommend going with three quarters just to save yourself the hassle of pulling. It's hung up on something. Good yank? It's stuck, so we're gooping on some lube in hopes it'll just slip past the first section, which is always the hardest. Hooray! It's finally pulling through. Just had to give it a really good tug. It was kind of scary. It's getting a little hard to pull now. Going past through all those bends. Oh, wow. Need both hands. Well, I cannot physically pull it with my hands. It's just sliding through, giving me blisters. Uh, have something called cable puller, which will grip really, really hard right here on the cable, and I can just grab it with a ring. Hopefully, it allows me to pull it. Wow. Oh man, I just let the biggest woohoo out. We are finally done. This took way too long. Look at all the sand that dumped out of this thing. This was acting as a block the whole time. Ah, uh, very difficult. I really recommend getting the giant size conduit to prevent this issue. Or, you know, make sure there's no sand in it before you start pulling. Anywho, the wires are through. There they are. That's our connection. Yes! Got three connecting pieces spliced in or sorry crimped with their connectors on to receive the other side of the wind generator wires also have the shrink tubing pieces slid over first don't do like i have in the past and forget these till it's too late now what i'm going to do is we're going to take the tractor lift the bucket up move it forward so it's kind of a nice table height to work on everything Two out of three crimped and done. They are different wire gauges, but luckily the crimp we have is strong enough to actually handle the two different sizes of wires. So we're on the last crimp, then we're going to bring the heat shielding tubing down over the connectors like so. Shrink it. And shrink it. Fun part. Alright, got all three of them crimped and good to go. Now if you're like me, you might be wondering which one's positive, negative, and ground or whatever. Well, I just got done having like a 15 minute lecture on electricity and I still couldn't tell you. <laughs> All I know now is that it's AC and it doesn't matter. And the rectifier is what decides what's positive and negative and lets it through to your battery system. All right then, that makes it real easy. Pulling the generator over here again to provide power for a high amperage draw heat gun to shrink the tubing. We could use a blowtorch, but honestly, I just see that ending real badly.
here we are. All three of them completely done, good to go. Now, just need to pull these wires in, slide the top of the wind turbine over this, and tighten it. All right, we're now pulling these wires back through the collar of the pipe, and see how far they can go. Go ahead, Dad. Oh. All right, hold it. All right, here we go. Woohoo! The wind generator is on the piece of pipe and on the top of the tower. Now, believe it or not, this is kind of difficult. I don't like how it was done. Way too much work to evenly torque all these down. Maybe in the future they should look into a cam lock system or something. Uh, now, put the blades on, figure out the rest of everything, and then we got to work on the guy wires and get this thing up in the air. Yeah! Windmills are pretty amazing. Uh, they can rotate 360 degrees without killing the wires out. And look at how good the bearing is. <laughs> really, really nice. Beautiful. Well, the blades are installed. Now, before we do this, you want to put the jam nuts on the back? Yes. All right, so here, lift that off, flip it over. So the way they made this is they have some machine bolts. Then this metal piece is threaded or tapped with thread. They really just rely on the threads and the holding power of it to hold this whole thing on. I don't really feel comfortable with that, neither does Dad. So we're going to use multiple nuts in a jam nut situation. All right, got the nuts on the back of the spool or whatever you want to call it. Now... We have a nut that is trapped in the center, and the spindle rotates to pull the nut and the whole turbine assembly down to lock on top of it. Now, Hercules here is going to try to break the housing. Uh, wait a minute. Right, now we're going to apply a little mechanical advantage here. Uh oh, guys, look out. Old school wrench trick here. Pay attention. All right, that's good, that's good, that's good. That's good. It ain't coming off. All right, now. No. The nose cone. <laughs> okay. Is that supposed to lock into something? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, there we go. Now let go and let's see if it uh, can spin 360 degrees still. Oh yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's see. Did the cone lock? Yeah. All right. Yeah. There we go. The blades are on the turbine generator itself attached to the top of the tower. Next step, guy line. Well, today's lots of moments of truths. We have the wind turbine hooked up. Now, we're going to free spin it with these leads disconnected, hooked to a voltmeter to make sure that it can produce power before I put it up in the air and wonder why it's not making power later, in case it's dead. Okay, have one hooked up to one. One hooked up to another. Again, because it's AC, we're just trying to measure the voltage. It's not necessarily positive or negative yet. So, here we are. Spin it when you feel like it. Hang on a minute. Nice, you produced two volts. How much? Two volts. Two volts? Drop it down a scale then. Go down to like 100 volts. I only see 20. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Five volts. Five volts. 
And it's 24 volt motor, right? No, it's AC. Oh, right. AC. Hmm. Well, I can still see the blade, so it's not spinning super fast, but it is producing voltage. It's not zeroed out. That's the main thing. <laughs> Success. Okay, well, I lied. The next step is not the guy wires. There's so many small steps in this, I keep on getting ahead of myself. I still haven't even dug the piles yet to anchor everything to. The next step, thank you, RG Homestead, is to paint this thing gaudy colors so that the helicopters that fly about 10 times below their ceiling won't crash and take this thing out. The uh, minimum height a helicopter is supposed to fly is 500 feet off the ground. Trust me that they get low enough to hit this tower. Although I'm confident in my, I guess, requirement to not have to paint it, I'm not confident in having to come clean up a huge aircraft from the side of the mountain, even if it would get me a new tower. So, pink and yellow it is. Maybe some fluorescent green on the tip, I don't know. Well, it's going to require some more paint. I haven't done the underbelly yet. But I think this should do it. It has no form of standard as opposed to pink, yellow, pink, yellow. That should pretty much do it. I'm definitely going to be the owner of the purtiest wind tower, though. Look at how shiny that pink is. It's like bubblegum. Well, dang. Forgot a couple fasteners. Maybe one of these days I will get through a project without having to go into town. <laughs> Maybe.